one, it's Michaela. A lot of you guys already know me either through my Instagram or my Twitter, FBA Michaela, or my in recent interview with Miles. So yeah, let's just do a little bit of a background about myself for those who don't already know me. I actually got started reselling back in October of last year. I did a lot of GPUs, consoles, collectibles, and other stuff of that nature, and I didn't open my eBay store until the first week of November, so it was just in time for, you know, the quarter four festivities. I ended up selling a few toys on eBay, and at the time I had a friend who had a giant eBay store, and he also dabbled a little bit into Amazon, and he kind of introduced the idea of selling on Amazon. Well, I tried it close to probably the third week of November, and Obviously, I couldn't sell the toys that I wanted to because I was gated, and I was like, hey, you know, I don't know if I want to do this or not because it's ungating stuff. Like, I have no idea how this works. I had, like, really no, no resources that I knew of. I was just doing, you know, eBay stuff, so I ended up giving it up, and then actually the couple months later in February, I restarted my journey again, this time with an actual mentor in Amazon FBA. And yeah, so like the rest has been history. This is going to be my fifth month this month, and I just broke um, 150,000 total. Um, I'm, I reached 100K in four months, and this month I'm actually on track to hit around 75,000. So yeah, I just thought I'd make this video. I've gotten a lot of requests, you know, kind of like sourcing, keep a seller amp, you know, the tools that I use, how I use them, you know, what kind of goes through my mind. So yeah, I thought I would, it would be a great idea can I just show you guys a live look into what I am thinking when I'm doing my sourcing you know how I'm using these tools and such so let's get started I kind of just picked a random product that I found yesterday when I was sourcing as a lot of you guys already know the, the sales were banging yesterday so um, I found a lot of good stuff uh, and you can just start with anything any category whether that's you know apparel shoes grocery um, makeup like health products, whatever you're gated or ungated in or want to try to get, you know, ungated in, um, it works. You know, each of us have kind of like a different background and kind of like expertise in different fields. So um, whatever you guys like is what I recommend. You know, I get that question a lot. So, yeah, I've been trying to do a little bit more makeup and beauty. So I thought I'd start with, you know, a beauty. So like this is Seller Amp, obviously. Um, when I first look at Seller Amp, you know, I'm looking at a few different things. You know, this is the best seller rank. Um, I didn't realize that was the actual term. I just called it the sales rank. But yeah, this is actually called the best seller's rank. Um, so when I'm looking, I look at, you know, this is like the three main things that I kind of look at. I want this to be, you know, 1%. Um, right now I'm sourcing kind of under 50k because I have, you know, some capital and cash flow issues. But when I first started out, I was just looking under 100k. Once you, you know, kind of get in the routine of finding and sourcing products, you can kind of, you know, fine tune your criteria a bit more. This is the estimated sales, you know, how many sales per month that is expected. You know, this is just an estimate. Um, I think it tends to be a little bit more conservative. So this is actually like a really good tool um, because I tend to be a little bit more conservative. So having another conservative um, source is really helpful for me. You know, the, here's the max cost. Obviously, that's what you're trying to get under when you're sourcing. Uh, here's your cost price, your sales price, uh, profit, obviously, and ROI. Here's the alerts tab. You know, if it's a hazard, a dangerous good, you're, you know, it's maybe an oversized item whatever, you're going to see this pop up right here. And then obviously if you're eligible or not, this will come up yes or no. So this also has a really good um, chart, I guess. Uh, I tend to look at, you know, the the 90 day and you could use this kind of as a guide as the buy box. So the last 90 days, it is averaged around, you know, 26.95. So that's really good to use as kind of like a baseline. And then it tells you a little bit of everything else, like the lowest FBA, the lowest FBM, uh, the estimated sales. And then here is the alerts tab like that I was explaining before. This is kind of um, a version that's broken down into more parts. And then here, you know, is the Keepa chart. Um, you've got, you know, this is the price and then this is the seller count at the bottom. And then you've got a profit calculator. 
you can switch this back and forth between FBA and FBM, and they just added this recently, the small and late. And then you got the Google Sheets feature where you can actually export um, things that you find into a Google Sheet, which is so much nicer than just manually doing it every single time. And then you got the offers tab and you can, you know, switch this back between all offers and just prime only. And they also just added this feature where you can actually load all of the sellers. So yeah, there's that. And then here's a little bit about Keepa. Like I said before, this is, you know, the price action and everything. This is, you know, the rank. And then this is obviously the seller counter as well. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of go through this as if I was, you know, looking to buy this. Um, so first things first, BSR, I see that's under 50,000, which is my criteria, which that makes, you know, the cut estimated sales. It's about 226. Like I said, it tends to be a little bit more conservative. Um, that's checking out, you know, um, another huge thing is Keepa. I'm a big Keepa girl. This right here, as you can see, it is pretty stable. It doesn't really fluctuate a whole bunch, a whole bunch. With anything on Amazon, the price is going to fluctuate at least a little bit. You just don't want to see like a massive, you know, decline um, in your price action. So, and then here you can see the background, it tells you the rank as well. You can see the rank has been pretty stable and it's remained under uh, about 65,000, which is pretty good. And then here I would look at the offer count. You know, I don't want to see, you know, a rocket ship going to outer space like I talked about in one of my reels. You know, you can see this, it kind of keeps fluctuating a bit and it's actually kind of going down now. So if it looks like this, I don't buy it because nine times out of ten that thing's going to tank if it hasn't already. And then I look down here, same thing. Um... I kind of like using this one a little bit more because it's just all on one page and it's kind of bigger. Um, so yeah, I start by looking at the buy box statistics and a lot of people don't use this tab and it's actually one of my most used tabs because you can see is, you know, one seller kind of dominating it? You know, is it a brand that's dominating it? There's just so much vital information on here that I use. So you can see right now 17, 16, 10, and then, you know, it goes even further down, uh, this is really good, spread evenly pretty much. Um, you don't want to see like one person dominating like 75% of the stock. Uh, it's just, it's not a good setup, especially when you've got, you know, 27 people on a listing. Because you got to think about it this way. When somebody has 75% of the buy box, they're going to get a majority of the buy box. And then you're left with 25%. And that is not just 25% for you, that's 25% for, you know, 25 other people. Um, so I just tend to stick under, you know, 50 or so. It ultimately depends on, um, you know, what kind of product it is. Maybe this product has been dominated by, you know, a seller who has gotten access to this product and, you know, nobody else can find it. You know, maybe I just happen to stumble upon it and, you know, I can give, you know, I can... Uh, try to take some of that buy box from them. So it ultimately depends, you know, like I said. And then the offers tab over here, I also use, you can see, you know, the price history has the price really fluctuated too much. As you can see here, you know, it's stayed within, you know, a little, a little over 30 bucks to about 27-ish. The prices have been, you know, pretty stable. And you can see on this tab right here, kind of the average that they're selling at. And then I also use this roughly, this is a rough estimate, you know, sold within 30 days tab. So it's showing around 205. And this only shows the in stock people. So there might be other people on this listing that have sold in, in the last 30 days that are not, are no longer in stock anymore. So their stuff isn't showing. And sometimes people hide stock too. And so you're never going to know <laughs> exactly how many they've been selling because they have their stock hidden. So yeah, and you can also use this um, to kind of see like how fast things are selling, you know, just kind of use this as a rough estimate. Like this person had 100 and, you know, May 15th and they sold. I don't think that's actually accurate, but you can use this sometimes as just kind of like a rough estimate, June 29th. And then by July 1st, they didn't, they only had one left. And you can use this to kind of determine if these are, you know, FBA or FBMers, kind of if you 
trying to decide if you want to do FBA or FBM. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about that. So by looking at this product without, you know, determining if I can actually buy it or not, this is this is a really good um, Keepa. You know, as I said before, this is very stable. You want to see pr price stability. You don't want to see like a rapid increase or rapid decrease because chances are it's going to decline even if it's going up. I don't like to buy on price spikes. I like to stay consistent. I like to build that steady foundation. And this is ha this is an example of a very good foundation. And like I said before, the seller count is really important. When I'm looking at seller counts, people always ask me, like, how many is too many? And it's ultimately based on the product and, you know, how many uh, estimated sales. It's just, it's just so, it's not black and white for me. Um, like this product, it only has 27 sellers on it. It's selling, you know, 226 a month. That's a good ratio. You just kind of have to put it in a, in a ratio sense. You know, if this was only 30 sales a month and there's almost 30 sellers, do you want to fight for, you know, maybe one or two a month? No. Uh, so you kind of want these to be, you want these numbers to make sense is, is what I'm getting at. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can maybe buy this. So you can see here, um, is like the mini version. Yeah, it's probably the mini version. And this is uh, the regular version, as you can see. So yeah, maybe if there's a good sale or whatever at Alta, they do run um, frequent sales. So maybe that, that would be a good purchase at one point.